Hey all, Matt Vanacoro here with my friends at Gig Performer, and today I'm going to show you how to use velocity scaling and curves inside of Gig Performer 4. If you're new here, make sure you click on that like and subscribe button for other great content. So let's check it out. We're going to start out with velocity scaling, uh, as understanding that will help you with some more advanced curves. So let's just check out this sound. I've got a nice little piano sound going. You can see I've got a MIDI in going to a Keyscape piano. Okay, sounds pretty good. And what I want to do is I want to adjust a little bit of that velocity scaling because maybe uh, with Keyscape, I'm noticing with this keyboard, I'm getting to those upper velocities a little too soon. Even when I'm playing softly, it's hitting that upper level of velocity. Sounds a little too hard hammer style piano for me. So what I can do is I can open up the MIDI input. And from there, I've got this velocity curve right there that I'm able to adjust. And I can scale it and I can decide if I want to get there slower or faster. So I'm going to click on the curve and open it up. So there you go. I've got it opened up. And from there, I can pick a slower curve, one that like sort of slopes upward a little bit slower and more gradually. So when I start to play a little softer now, it's favoring those softer velocity levels, which is what I'm looking for, like a softer piano. Now, I know we've all opened up on a keyboard before that rock piano setting, and what that winds up being is mostly favoring the upper velocities. So if I click on a log shape, you'll see it gets to those upper velocities, even when I'm barely playing it. So it's really favoring those upper velocities. So I've got a lot of control over the velocities and how they scale. And that's great because, you know, you never know when you show up at a gig what keyboard you're going to be working with. Uh, if you're working with your own keyboard and you need to scale it a little bit, or if you show up and the back line has provided you with a keyboard you're unfamiliar with and you find that it's hitting those upper velocities too soon, something that happens to me frequently, um, you know, you can go in and adjust as needed. Now, you can also scale if you never want to get there. So let's say you're recording something and you want to play this big sweeping arpeggio thing, but you want it to be quiet, but you're just not able to get it to that quiet level and still play the way you want to. Well, that's how you can just jump in and restrict a little bit. So I'll restrict the velocities so they never get to that upper level. So I can play this more, you know, sweeping arpeggio really hard. and never get to that upper velocity. And I can restrict it as much as I want. So if I want to really hammer away at it and don't worry about the velocity, but feel confident it's never going to get to that upper end. So I can hit that as hard as I want and never feel like it's going to be living in that upper velocity range. So that's basically the way to understand what that velocity curve can do. But you can scale it and draw some really advanced curves when you want to get more control of a lot of different things. So let's just get into adjusting a curve that might be a little more funky and useful. All right, I'm going to go to this second one with a synth. So I've got a synth here, and I want to use a widget to control the hardware. We've got a great video explaining how to do this step by step, so don't worry if I blow through it pretty fast. You can check it out. So what I'm going to do is I want to get one knob to control synth cutoff. I've got a knob right there, okay? I'm going to go into the editor and edit that panel, and I'll click on the widget. And from there, what I'll do is I'll pick the plugin that I want to control, my Juno plugin, and I can just search really quick. Uh, so I'll look for that VCF cutoff. There it is. So now that's controlling the VCF cutoff. Now I'll go to MIDI, and I want to assign that to a MIDI um, you know, controller. So I'll hit Learn. I've got a nice little MIDI controller here that I can control it with. So there it is. I'm all done. My knob, my pedal is now controlling that widget, and the widget is controlling the filter cutoff. Let me play and see how it works. All right, it's working. Definitely controlling that cutoff, but the problem that I'm noticing is that when I go to the minimum level of the cutoff, the sound completely disappears. Well, I don't want it to go to zero, really. I just want to get that cool, you know, Tom Sawyer-esque swell, uh, but I don't want it to disappear totally. So I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to remember, oh, just don't go to the lower end. I can set up a velocity curve here that will control that and never let it get to the bottom. So if I go to the value, You'll see that same little graph that you saw when I opened up the, the MIDI uh, block. So I'll scale it up a little bit and make the minimum value 20. 
There you go. And notice the graphics. So the knob itself turns all the way. I still get 100% knob rotation, but if you look around the edges, there's a strip that shows me what the minimum value is going to be. And I can change the maximum value if I don't want it to fly too far. So if you look, see that strip adjusting as I lower the maximum value? There we go. There we go. Now, I can go even a little further. I've got a curve designer if I really want to get customized with those curves. So I'll click this button right here, the one that says EXP, and open up the curve designer. And from there, I can adjust the X and Y coordinates using these knobs and add new points in, move my X over, maybe have it drop down again before it goes back up, and then add a new point, move my X over further, and then add the Y, have it go back up again, and then I'll add a new point and move the X over further, and there we go. So now that curve is really customized. And you can see the way it travels through it. So even when it's not open, um, if you take a look, so let me he'll go ahead and just save that. Now if you look, as I adjust the controller, you can see it traveling through that curve in real time. So I love that to be able to see where I'm going. You know, I can open it up again and anytime I want to, I can go back to the standard one. So there's some really, really great controls in there too. I can instantly reverse it. So if I want to take the sound out as I fade the pedal in, I'll just go ahead and invert the value. And now as I pull the pedal out, it comes back in again, which is really cool. So quick inversions of the value and quick reversing of the value as well. And the final thing is if you want, I can draw with the mouse. So one of the things I love to do is sometimes to introduce a little bit of chaos, right? So I'll just put in some blips as it goes if I wanted this to be noisy. And now as I go through those curves, a cool like instability going on so you can draw those curves however you want to you know using your mouse just like that and when you're done you can smooth it out which I love as well so it'll smooth out the curve and really get those values where you want to and that brings that chaos into it now if you like the chaos of that you'll love the probabilistic sound designer we've got a video on that as well also on the screen right now, you'll see a video about how to keep all of your plugins organized in the wiring view. Go ahead and check that out to learn how Gig Performer 4 helps you keep your workspaces neat quickly. And if you haven't tried Gig Performer yet, you can click on the link in the description for a free 14-day trial. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.